So yes, very exciting results in Michigan. First trifecta in 40 years. I, um, this is like too much detail, but I will say the last trifecta was only one year. So I really think it's the first trifecta ever. Cause it like, you have to go back. I can't remember to like the 1800s or something like it doesn't exist. Um, so we won a uh, governor's seat, secretary of state, attorney general. Um, we took both the House and uh, state Senate, and we won two really important uh, ballot measures protecting voting rights. They're both constitutional ballot measures protecting voting rights and reproductive rights. Um, and we maintained our state Supreme Court majority. So it was a um, very big, very big election for us. Super exciting. Um, what I want to talk about today and what Ken is going to highlight um, later is what we do with that so that um, we win in 2024. Um, and so, you know, victory in 2024 requires a number of things from our partners. There are about 30 to 40 partners, depending on the year here in Michigan. Um, and so there's a lot that they're actually doing now. I know people think sometimes like, oh, this is an off year from an election standpoint. Um, but there's a ton of election related, like there's a ton of work that's happening right now that is setting us up um, to win in 2024. And I will say in 2024, I think you saw on Billy's map earlier, we will have an open Senate seat. So Debbie Stabenow has announced her retirement and that will be um, really critical for us uh, in addition to the presidential, of course. Um, and so there are three core focuses for groups right now um, in order to win in 2024, winning a legislative agenda that directly improves people's lives, um, ballot initiative and candidate preparation, candidate preparation, um, and then improving their capacity and infrastructure. So I'll talk super briefly about these and then Ken will really drive it home for like, what is it, what does it actually look like for an organization? Um, so, you know, for 40 years, Democrats really for longer have told voters that the reason that none of the things that we want um, are possible is because Republicans are in charge. And that is just not an excuse anymore. And we saw for the first time the difference, the really clear difference um, between having a Republican run legislature and a Democrat one um, after the MSU mass shooting last week, which you probably heard of three students were murdered, um, five folks were, were injured. There was a mass shooting a few years ago at a high school um, north of Detroit um, where four people were killed and absolutely nothing happened. Um, this year, uh, le this week, Democrats have already introduced 11 bills um, for safe storage, um, extreme risk protection orders and universal background checks. And we fully expect that those will move through the house and the Senate quickly and go to the governor's desk um, and be signed. So there is a, a clear, and obvious difference um, that elections had and will have on people's lives. Um, that's not the only thing that they are moving forward. They are also um, in the process of already moving forward anti-discrimination legislation, uh, protecting LGBTQ folks. Um, they appropriated the first state funding for water prevention, water shutoff prevention, which has been a huge issue um, around the state, in particular in Detroit, but in other um, urban centers as well. And there is a massive list of policies that we have been like sitting on for 40 years that we um, are hopeful that they will drive through. Again, like that is gonna take organizing, you know, not like just because we have a trifecta does not mean that everything just sails through. Billy talked earlier about like mansion and cinema. I think we all know everybody's got their mansions, everybody's got their cinemas. And so there is, there's a lot of work to do um, for groups to advocate and hold electeds accountable. Um, and, you know, if we take our foot off the gas, if we like make the mistake of not passing a bold agenda, thinking that, that, that we were elected for some kind of a moderate kind of mealy nothingness, um, it will be very hard to motivate people in 2024 to keep electing Democrats. So the second focus um, that groups are preparing right now um, or are doing is, is preparing what's gonna be on the ballot. And that's both the proposals, which have been really critical and the candidates. So in the past three cycles, ballot proposals um, in Michigan have been a really important part of democratic victories, um, including successful initiatives to end gerrymandering. So we, do, we uh, were able to pass fair 
uh, nonpartisan redistricting in Michigan in 2018 um, to expand voting rights. That's how we got uh, no reason absentee and 40 days of early voting, like a bunch of stuff that we've now then been using to our advantage over the past couple of cycles, um, and also most recently uh, protecting abortion. So these are pretty massive undertakings. They end up, you know, costing like 20 to 30 million dollars. You have to collect like six or seven or 800,000 signatures. It's a very big deal. And so right now, um, groups that are thinking about that are like are doing a bunch of different kinds of testing. They're doing legal drafting. They're doing more testing. They're building coalitions, fundraising. You know, honestly, trying to figure out which one makes sense because there's only so many that can kind of go. So there's quite a bit of work um, now that groups are engaging in around that. And then the other thing they're doing is uh, participating in statewide candidate recruit recruitment and uh, training. And so some groups do that through a centralized um, apparatus. Some of them have that on their own. Ken's gonna talk about um, what that looks like for Michigan People's Campaign later. And then the last thing, um, you know, in order to win, we have to get a lot more sophisticated about our backend operations. Um, too many of our partners are just spending too much time worrying about administrative issues, which is like not what you think of when you think of organizing, but that's actually what a lot of directors and staff spend their time dealing with because they're like employers and they're legal entities and they're all this stuff. And so um, because of that, MVP has been supporting a founding group of our partners to launch an operations hub. Um, and we really believe, I believe, we the royal we, <laughs> that, you know, once this additional capacity is fully online, it's going to dramatically expand the ability of groups to do more aggressive political work, um, not just kind of the voter registration and general education, but really getting out there and being hard hitting about um, turning out folks, um, you know, for particular candidates and particular issues. 